And that's the end of the semi-final round of the Cyville Know-It-All Contest. The two winners, Mr. Dippity and Mr. Richmond, will be back tomorrow for the championship round and the grand prize, a trip around the world. So, we'll see you all tomorrow for the finals of the Know-It-All Contest. Well, Mr. Dippity, you did very well today. You answered the last five questions in a row. Thank you. I, I got a little lucky. You did really well yourself. Yes, I know. By the way, that's a nice shirt you're wearing. Oh, uh, thanks. I sell these at my shirt store. They're called snappy shirts, but I think they're <laughs> lucky shirts. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, perhaps I'll come by later on and have a look. I could use a new shirt for the finals tomorrow. Oh, well, stop on by. <laughs> Thank you. I think I will. Good. Yes, good. Good day, Mr. Dippity. Oh, Mr. Uh, Richmond. Welcome. This is my fiance, Monique. Uh, bonjour. Right back at you. Oh, hello, little pooch. Hmm. <coughs> Mr. Dippity, I would like to buy one of your lucky shirts to wear at the contest tomorrow. Well, they're not really uh, lucky shirts. <laughs> Those are called snappy shirts. We just got them in from France. <laughs> really? I will take one in white. Oh, I'm wearing a white one tomorrow, too. In that case, I'll take black. Do you deliver? Sure. Absolutely. We deliver. Good, because I don't carry. I'll be at home in one hour. <coughs> Oh, very well, Wedgwood. Better make that one hour and five minutes. Here's my address. Hi, you open? We? Oui? Yeah, you. You open? We? Oui? Yeah, you. Who else would I be talking to? Yes, we are open. Hey, you're the guy from the know-it-all contest. Yes, <laughs> that, that's right. And you are? Doug Savage, science court attorney. Are you the lawyer who's never won a case? I prefer the word, not yet. Ah. Mr. Richmond, I'm surprised you're not wearing a short sleeve shirt tomorrow. I heard it's going to be very hot. I can take the heat, Mr. Savage. Uh, me too. We'll see who withers first. Wedgwood, are you ready? Oh. Good. Let's go. Good day. Mr. Savage? Wedgwood? Oh. Well, uh, the door's shutting. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hi, and welcome to the grand prize round of the Know-It-All Contest. I'm your MC, Stenographer Fred. You each have 15 seconds to answer the question correctly. If you answer it incorrectly, the other person has to answer it in order to be declared the grand prize winner. Okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, so here we go. The category is history. Jessica, may I have the questions, please? Thank you. Okay, and the first question goes to Stephen Dippity. Who was the first African-American woman to crusade against slavery in the 1840s and then crusade for women's rights in the 1850s? You have 15 seconds. Uh, oh, Sojourner Truth, a very courageous woman. Correct. Wow, he's good. So was she. Next question is for Mr. Richmond. Who was the first man to set foot on the moon? Uh, it's very, uh, <clears throat> very warm up here. Our uh, first person on the moon. <clears throat> Neil Armstrong. That's correct. <laughs> well, we have a tie after round one. Now, round two. Okay. The category is geography. Jessica, may I have the questions, please? And the first question is for Mr. Dippity. Which country is not located in South America? Costa Rica, Brazil, or Bolivia? Uh, uh, Costa Rica. Correct. Costa Rica is not located in South America. It's in Central America. Next question is for Mr. Richmond. Which continent is not located on the equator? South America, Australia, or Africa? You have 15 seconds. Oh, the equator. That's very hot. I'm very hot. 10 seconds. Feel faint. Too hot. Must sit down. Ah. I'm sorry, Mr. Richmond. You didn't answer the question in time. Mr. Dippity, do you know which of these three continents is not on the equator? Uh, mm. Australia? 
That's correct. You're the new champion. Wow. I won. I can't believe it. I'm going around the world. Mm. That's enough, Mr. Savage. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I just got too hot. I felt faint and couldn't think straight. Oh, man. I get that all the time. What causes it? I think it comes from not knowing any answers. But I knew the answer. That's strange. You seemed fine when I saw you yesterday at Mr. Dippity's store. Wait a minute, Mr. Savage. That's it. What? What's it? I bought this shirt from Mr. Dippity. He probably dipped it in some sort of chemical that would make me hot and dizzy. Hey, maybe that's why his name is Dippity. Because he likes to dip things. Hmm, did you think so? Seems a little far-fetched. You don't know me very well, do you? So, as far as you know, Mr. Dippity, there was nothing unusual about the shirt? Uh, nothing at all. I, I was wearing the exact same kind of shirt that Mr. Richmond was wearing. Tim, get a shirt. We'll bring it down to the lab and run a test on it. Does it matter which color? Yes, it does. I want the same color that Mr. Richmond was wearing. He had a black shirt. Ms. Kremple, I, I don't want to lose my business to Mr. Richman. He's not suing you for your business, Mr. Dippity. He wants the grand prize, the trip around the world. And he wants you to drive him. What? Apparently, he won't fly. That, that's crazy. I, I can't drive him around the world. Think about the traffic. Will you help me, Ms. Kremple? Yes, we'd be glad to help you, Mr. Dippity. So, Mr. Dippity, we are supposed to believe that you did not dip... Mr. Richmond's shirt into some sort of heat-producing chemical? That's right. I, I did not dip it into anything. <laughs> we'll see about that, Mr. I like to dip things dippity. No more questions. Your witness, Ms. Kremple. Mr. Dippity, did you dip Mr. Richmond's shirt into anything? <laughs> no, I... Thank you. I call I am Richmond to the stand. Isn't it true, Mr. Richmond, that you knew the answer to the jackpot question, but you couldn't answer it because you were too hot and dizzy and felt faint? Yes. And isn't it true that you were wearing a shirt that you bought at Mr. Dippity's shirt store? Yes, I was. And isn't it also true that you were not wearing this shirt the day before and you did not feel faint? Yes, that's true. Your Honor, could you please ask everybody to leave because this case is closed! Mr. Savage, we're going to follow due process here if you don't mind. Suit yourself. Your Honor, I call Dr. Felix Fullergas to the stand. Doctor, I gave you Mr. Richmond's shirt to examine, correct? Yes. And what did you find out? Well, I found out that there were no foreign substances in the shirt. Thank you. You found nothing? Well, we did find something. <gasps> what? Aha! Yeah. Uh -huh. We found... Get ready to jump up and down like a crazy kangaroo. Mustard. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Finally! A victory! I'm sorry, did you say mustard? Mustard. Let me know when I should jump up and down like a kangaroo, Mr. Savage. Thank you, Doctor. He dipped it in mustard? No, I had a hot dog on my way home after the contest. It was Wedgwood's idea. Huh? Your Honor, I'd like to straighten this out right now. Professor, is there any scientific explanation as to why two men wearing identical shirts would have different experiences under the hot sun? Yes, indeed. First, let's talk about the heat, since that's really what this case is all about. Now, believe it or not, heat is a form of light. What? Here, Mr. Savage, take this flashlight and shine it at this mirror. I can't see. And why not? Because the light is reflecting back into my eyes. That's right. Now, the important word here is reflecting. Because now, Mr. Savage, I want you to shine the light at this old piece of wood. Okay, good. Now what's happening? I'm still having trouble seeing. Very good, Mr. Savage. So where does the light go? Uh... Some of it gets absorbed in the wood. Absorbed into the wood? Uh, that's right. The light gets absorbed right into the wood. You mean like a sponge? Well, yeah, I guess you could say that. But what does this have to do with the case? That's a good question, Doug. What does Professor Parsons' experiment have to do with the case? While there's a break, let's review what's happening in the trial. During the final rounds of the know-it-all contest, Mr. Richmond suddenly felt very hot and was unable to answer the winning question, so he lost the contest. He believes that the shirt he was wearing, which he bought from Stephen Dippity, has something to do with why he felt so hot. But does it?
Mr. Dippity and Mr. Richmond were wearing the same shirts, except Mr. Richmond's was black and Mr. Dippity's was white. Does the color of the shirt have anything to do with heat? Let's go to the science court lab to conduct our own experiments about heat. Wow, I'm impressed. You've already learned quite a bit about heat. Are you ready to get back to the trial? Professor Parsons is still on the stand and is in the middle of explaining his experiment. Let's return to the courtroom to find out what happens. Well, heat can be either reflected or absorbed, just like light. I don't get it. Uh, I'd better show a demo. Fred, could you turn on the laboratory sun lamp, please? Okay. Hey, the temperature's going up. Now, do you know why? Because the sun lamp is very hot. Well, that's right. But look, the thermometer with the black shirt is heating up faster. So that explains why Mr. Richmond was very hot and felt faint. That's right. Just because of the shirt color? That's correct. The black absorbed a lot of the heat while the white reflected it. Do you know why a white shirt like this looks white to us? Uh, because it's white? No. How could I have missed that one? It looks white because it is made in such a way as to reflect light and heat. The white color you see is actually reflected light and heat coming off the cloth. But the black cloth of this shirt is not reflecting any light or heat, is it? Uh, no ma'am, it isn't. It's sucking the heat and light in and trapping it, getting hotter and hotter. Thank you, Professor Parsons. Oh, you bet. Now I know why I always sweat like a hideous pig in this dark robe. Okay, closing arguments. Let's hear them. Good people of the jury, what if Dr. Fulagas found something other than mustard? Huh? Think about it. Then Stephen Dippity would really be guilty. Hey, that rhymes. Sort of. How much more guilt do you people need? Thank you. Okay, Mr. Savage, thanks for keeping it short and confusing. Ms. Grempel, go ahead. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Stephen Dippity did not dip Mr. Richmond's black shirt into anything. Mr. Richmond was hot and felt faint because his dark shirt absorbed a lot of light and heat from the hot sun. It did not reflect it. Heat and light might bounce off things, it depends on what they hit. Or sometimes they will stick to things, it depends on what they hit. If they bounce, it's called reflecting, and the thing stays really cool. If they stick, it's called absorbing, and stuff can get hot as a rule. Heat and light might bounce off things, it depends on what they hit. Or sometimes it will stick to things, it depends on what they hit. Well, you've heard all the evidence in this case. While the jury is out, let's hear your opinions. Do you think Stephen Dippity will be found guilty or not guilty? The jury has reached a decision and is just about to enter the courtroom. Let's return to the trial to hear their verdict. Judge Stone is wearing the latest in courtroom attire, featuring supreme court comfort. Whether you're innocent or guilty or just waiting for the verdict. Hey, hey, speaking of the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Stephen Dippity, not guilty. Maybe Monique did it. And Monique's not guilty either. It was the dark shirt that absorbed a lot of heat and caused problems for Mr. Richmond. Thank you, jury. Science court is adjourned. Well, there you have it. Another case peacefully settled in science court. I'm glad you were able to tune in and learn more about heat absorption. And I hope you'll follow me to the lab so we can investigate further. Thanks for stopping by the science court laboratory. We all had a great time investigating heat, and we hope you did too. Join us soon for another science court exploration. But until then, keep guessing, hypothesizing, and experimenting. <laughs>